We've had first Urza saga, yes, but what about twelfth Urza saga? Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka 3Menu here for another legacy video, and today Caleb has asked the question, what if we just try to win the game with Urza Saga as hard as possible by repeatedly copying it? And specifically the timing of this donation decklist is because of the release of Echoing Deep from Lost Cavern of Ixalan. So, Echoing Deeps can enter the battlefield tapped as a copy of any land card in a graveyard, except it's a cave in addition to its other types. So the general idea of this decklist is going to be play Urza's Saga and then do something to copy it kind of again and again and again to keep a stream of constructs coming uh, basically indefinitely. And we're going to take a look at Caleb's initial decklist here which I think had some problems. So this is the decklist as it was originally submitted. And I think there were there's kind of some dead weight here. There was kind of this desire to do some cute things with Amulet of Vigor, allowing um, things that ETB tapped to immediately untap and do some cool things. And the idea was to combo those with Satsuki, the living lore, so that you can tick your saga up immediately and start making tokens with them that turn. Here's kind of my issue. This deck has 16 colorless lands. Like the mana base of this deck is very much built around Urza's saga. And I think trying to have a green white pip card is going to be tough. Counting the one-time use Lotus Puddle, like we do still have 18 colored sources, but we do need two of these in order to get this going. And trying to get this going alongside Urza Saga just kind of feels awkward to me. The other thing that feels pretty awkward to me here is that we have basically zero main deck interaction of any kind with our opponents. We don't have Punishing Fires, we don't have Lightning Bolts, Swords to Plowshares, Spheres, we don't have anything to stop our opponent from executing their game plan. And I kind of thought that was a bad place to be in, so I did a little back and forth with some people in the Lands Discord, and here's the updated version of the decklist that I came up with after listening to their advice. So the first piece of advice that I got was drop Vesuva and just play Thespian Stage, with the idea being that turning Thespian Stage into a card that has Urza Saga ability, and then copying a basic land afterwards is incredibly strong. And so that interaction is probably worth playing Stage over Vesuva, and if we play Stage it's somewhat free to slot in one copy of Dark Depths just so we can have an alternative win condition or if Urza Saga gets Pithing Needled. And on that note, a card like Boseju to answer Pithing Needle is really important. And we also want outs to random things the format has to offer, such as Ensnaring Bridge. Next, I wanted to fill in the gaps of this deck list. We wanted something to interact with our opponent in some way, enter Sphere of Resistance, and we wanted some course, sorry, some source of card advantage. Enter Valakut Exploration. So this can get us some extra land drops. It can also get us some extra cards in Graveyard, which is relatively solid here. Now, um, obviously this is untested, you know, this is very much uh, theoretical work, so we've got no reps on this. Mulch was one of, the, one of the other cards that I was considering in the Valakut Exploration slot, and that would allow me to stay a monocolored deck list. Still unsure about that, but I'm, I think, much happier with where this is at, theoretically. Now, as this league goes on, we'll see how good the Echoing Depths ends up being. 
I feel like this is a card that I might want like one copy of, and I think maxing out on too many of these is going to be sus, but we'll see. And then I just kind of built a generic sideboard, um, primarily looking for answers to artifact decks, to graveyard-based decks with a lot of splash damage for Delver here, and then a little bit of utility off um, Urza Saga, Crop Rotation, Elvish Reclaimer, those sorts of effects. Um, it's possible there should be a couple of Wastelands in this deck list, but I want to honor Caleb's original vision of like having 12 effective copies of Urza Saga. And I think if we start getting into like game one bullets, you know, your Maze of Ith, Bogs, Caracas, Wastelands and stuff, like this would be the stuff to go. And then I wouldn't be doing the kind of the the donor's original idea here. So uh, I think we're ready to go ahead and hop into the league here. If you want to end up messing around with this deck list, check out the link to Moxfield down in the video description. And if you want to buy any of these cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. Let's battle. Well, folks, like this is it right here. Right? Like, th this is our theoretical dream. It's Urza Saga, an artifact on one, Ancient Tomb on two to start activating, Echoing Depths on three to continue the chain. Yeah, we're going to get to see in game one how viable this is. And that's awesome. Saga time. Also, I'm recording with the window open today because it's surprisingly hot in this office today randomly. So if you hear some random dogs outside or something, no, you didn't. <laughs> our opponent says on tv with a questionable experimental list wish me luck video traders aren't right. i've told my opponent that my list is uh spicy as well i'd say we are uh i'd say we're in ginger beer levels of spicy today you can definitely feel it on the back of the throat all right goblins the city is weird to me. Not like that it's in the deck, but that my opponent played it out on one like this. I get to make a 2-2 that can block a goblin lackey. So that's the good news. My opponent also like didn't opt to play a 3-drop on turn 1. Like the danger senses are tingling. Okay. Oh no, Scott. Oh no. Ooh. Alcode Exploration is neat. Let's make another construct. Let's... Am I getting the Shadow Spear? I don't really have time to equip it, oddly. I don't think I need it right now. I'm gonna get it anyway. So then we'll Echoing Deeps. It's an Urza Saga. We'll bash in for four. Opponent's at 16. I have to keep in mind that, like, Sticker Goblin can end up doing some really gross things. Fury can do some gross things. Where, like, my Construct Token eats a Fury and then my opponent sneaks a Muxus into play or something. Alright, so here's their Persistent Mana Source. Uh, that's a Battle Cry Goblin. Yeah! This card is insane. I'm really looking forward to recording with this, which I imagine will be one of the next few videos that you all see. They're just a little hard to get a hold of right now. The loan programs like Card Hoarder don't have them yet. All right. So this activates Urza Saga. Two more mana can equip Shadow Spear as well. I don't think I need second Ancient Tomb. So let's discard that. Play Boseju, make Construct, equip Shadow Spear. I definitely attack with one. I maybe am supposed to leave the second one back. Like, it feels like the way that I lose is my opponent dealing 21 points to me in a single attack step. And I think if I just sit with two constructs back, that's much harder to happen. All right, there we go. Win on the board. So, 
when I am on the draw, Sphere of Resistance probably does close to nothing against this deck because they can just get their sticker goblins and goblin lackeys in under my stuff. I think my opponent's hand was probably supposed to be a mulligan that game, honestly. Um, but I can't see the hand. Naming uh, broadside uh, bombardiers is probably a reasonable thing to do. I probably need a couple of cards to respect um, blood moons, chalices, and equivalent. Maybe this. I might play a couple of endurances to fill slots. The four slots here. Let's do a maze. Three fours line up really well versus creatures that my opponent can have. You know, the goblin rabble masters and friends. These just aren't the fastest. Let's just do this when I'm on the draw. Okay, yeah, so here we see some of the colorless mana awkwardness. The hand would maybe even still be a mulligan anyway, even if this was like a basic forest. We just don't have a lot of lands to take advantage of the exploration. We don't have the red or Balakut exploration. So let's take a look at this. Mox Diamond, discard probably Echoing Deeps, play Thespian Stage, and like almost works. It's It like probably works with a land as a draw, and I have like, I don't know, like 28 lands in this deck or something like that. Uh, I'm going to bin the Haywire Mite here. Um, I'm also going to check, did I board in Maze of Ith? I'm like pretty sure I did. Yeah, I did. Elvish Reclaimer. Uh, so that's interesting. I can Mox Diamond, Discard Deeps, Play Stage, and I think just play a Reclaimer, and we're hoping for any mana source next turn. Goblin. All right. So this is where the fun begins. Battlecry Goblin. All right. Brace for impact. Five. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, that's good. That's very good. So now my opponent can attack with this and fling one of their things to kill my Reclaimer. Yeah, they're holding priority here. Yeah, they throw the Namesticker Goblin to kill this. Good stuff. I need a mana source. I got a mana source. And... We're going to see if I can not die. If I don't just, like, immediately die, I I will produce a Merit Lodge in 20, my opponent. Now there's another dude coming. Some matron. Getting another name sticker goblin, uh, which presumably is just going to be used to activate this two or more times next turn um, to present lethal. We'll see if my opponent flings this at me this turn. Just flinging at, at my face immediately for five is pretty damn good. Yep, and they do. Okay, so I think we try to get cheeky here. So let's cast a crop rotation, sacrificing a thespian stage. I think we're going for depths, hoping to hit any land to just make my 2020 and absorb some damage. Any land. A crop rotation does not do it. I believe that means I'm dead. So this is just worth one point of damage, and then my opponent just plays Sticker Goblin, activates Battle Cry Goblin two to three times, and then flings the Sticker Goblin at me for lethal. All right, it's happening. Oh, that's a full six. That's three Battle Cry Goblin activations. I'm dead. Oh, is there just a Muxus too? Oh, no, it's just activating the Battlecry Goblin one more time. Yeah, you got it. Uh, yeah, so uh, Sticker Goblin plus Battlecry Goblin confirmed combo. That's just 18 damage in combat, not to mention that there could be another five on the fling. Oh, yeah, and there's that. Um, not that it matters, but I think my opponent could have optimized damage more, right? Like, they just want to get... To, like, they want to act... Well, no, I guess with this 
colorless mana being used. No, 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 never mind. They did it fine. Um, in some other situations where you have floating mana that is not like going to be situational, you can also like activate the Battlecry Goblin later to also pump this token. So when I'm on the play, I can use these to slow my opponent down. And when I'm on the play, I can get some stuff going before my opponent has a chance to play some stuff. So I could pretty easily lower my curve, get rid of the Valakut Exploration, play one body to round things out, keep Haywire Might as a random out to nonsense that's too durable off Urza Saga. Without an Exploration or a Mox or an Ancient Tomb here, I don't think this is actually fast enough to beat my opponent, which is wild. Their deck is fast. Uh, don't have the right starting color here. We're going to five. Okay. So one, two, three, four, just five. Just ignore sphere and just say, I'm making a 2020. You need to race that. Okay. Get rid of sphere and echoing. Boop. 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 So, can you go fetch land? You got like blue in there? Got some blue in there that I didn't know about? Guess I'll grab another forest. I don't actually have red cards right now. Uh, I guess pass turn. Do it in my opponent's upkeep. As to not randomly get got by wasteland. Keep the one with no ice counters. All right. Uh, very few outs in red to this. Um, a dead gone could do it. Let's see what you got. Nope, it is just a mountain. I, I respect the blood moon on the way out. Uh, we have, they say moral victory. Uh, we have gotten the GGs and we've put a win on board with our strategy. Although we are seeing a little bit of awkwardness. Today's video is sponsored by Eminence Gaming. They have run a ton of tournaments at this point, and you might know them from the competitive EDH scene, but their command tower software can be used for all sorts of different formats. It's really easy. You can even just give your players a QR code in order to get them all of their pairings and everything that they can need. I really love this software as a player, and you should talk to your stores about it. Consider using it, it's cool. All right, I'm perfectly happy with this opening hand, we just get turn one Sphere of Resistance, which is generally good against decks that play spells, which is most legacy decks. And I was about to say, the scariest thing is if my opponent can just play a turn one threat that goes under this Sphere, which is exactly what they did. And Ancient Tomb damage uh, can get a little gross in these sorts of situations. Um, this is dazable, but I am just going to jam here. Oh, we're in play. So, the scariest thing that can happen now is my opponent wastelanding this Ancient Tomb, and then I get temporarily locked under my own sphere. Slightly longer term, I will be probably looking to rotate away Ancient Tomb and turn it into Maze of Ith, and then just slowly accumulate advantage with life from the loam until we bury our opponent in Urza Saga tokens. All right, there's the flip. All right, we're not getting wastelanded, uh, which is great. I'm at 15. Exploration's awesome. I think that's worth playing at sorcery speed and taking the two life four. All right, do this, and crop rotation, sacking the ancient tomb. Cool. Oh fuck, I don't have game one maze of ith. That's in the sideboard. Awkward. There's a saga then. All right, there's a saga then. I'm fine. It's gonna like end of turn brainstorm here. What the fuck? Stern Dismissal in game one? What the fuck? Huh. Alright. I don't know about that one. But it sure was good in that spot. 
All right, they're on a rug build. All right, so do this. We'll life from the loam with a couple targets here. I'll drop a wooded foothills and pass the turn. I'm definitely in the danger zone here. I'm, I think, effectively dead to a lightning bolt. As I go to six here. Sure. Looks like my opponent's going to play their spell. I mean, I guess they could play multiple spells. That is a Merktide Regent holding up a mana to uh, play a counter spell. Uh, not dredging. Ancient Tomb is not going to do it. Uh, this is just lethal in the air. And we don't have Maze in game one. So I want Maze, Bog, four copies of Endurance. I can think about this and Sylvan Library. I think I'm just kind of looking to grind out value over time here with this sort of stuff. Uh, maybe keep one crop rotation to fill. I'm just like not the biggest fan of crop rotation versus ILO counter spells dot deck. And people always yell at me for boarding like that, but I don't care. Sure. Uh, this is not fast. It is not fast at all. But I'm hoping that doesn't really matter. The opponent does not have Force of Negation specifically for the Life from the Loam. I probably accumulate enough value over time that I'm just good. Sure. I don't mind that at all. Guess this just becomes the plan. And we'll see if we can loam this back. We can. Now, my opponent does have that uh, Stern Dismissal card. They do have Wastelands in their deck. Um, but between Echoing Deeps and uh, Life from the Loam, we should be pretty good at redeploying. So they can kind of stack this in a way that makes their Delver more likely to flip. They looked at their card. It wasn't something that was going to flip Delver. And so they got a look at a fresh card. So we only take one this turn, which is great. There is Wasteland. Sure, sure, sure. Another Delver. Um, I don't know that I want to dredge yet. I, think I just want to take a natural draw because exploration is very good. Ah, the illusion of choice. I really need to like play this card next turn. It makes like Urza Saga awkward. I think I am just going to pick up another basic forest. I guess I can safely return these and just accumulate more cards in hand. Like this is a card that doesn't matter in terms of counter spells as well. Really hoping to dodge blind flip Delver here. I think if my opponent has a brainstorm, it's a great opportunity to fire it off. Blind flip Delver, uh, revealing portent which is a weird choice. Like, I am going to pull that one up in case you are not familiar with that one. I mean, I, I guess it's something that helps you flip Delvers. Like, are you also a predict list? So I take six on this attack. I'm under a lot of pressure. I don't know that my life totals are such that I can afford to play Ancient Tomb to play around days. Um kind of awkward like the way this probably needs to work out is i probably need to play urza saga in this turn cycle and uh, valakut exploration uh that's slow here surgical extraction on life from the loam is fine so i think stern dismissal can beat me in two different ways i think it can beat me by bouncing this urza saga and i think it also can beat me by bouncing endurance um, I'm not going to give my opponent any more looks at cards from a draw step. I'm just going to try to resolve this now. All right, cool. I'll nuke your graveyard in case it's relevant for Merktide Regent. All right, sure, sure. Uh, they are just fetching. No end of turn spell, which is nice. Cool. Not getting green. Blood Moon. I mean, I've got Boseju. 
Though it's not like that's the end of the world, actually. Yeah. So I'll play a mountain. Dump a Valakut exploration into play. And in the not too distant future, uh, yeah, that's fine. Pitching, Marktide Regent. Sure. I might not actually be in bad shape. Like, I think I am not in an advantageous position by any means. Ah. Well, that's some shit. If I have two Boseju's in my deck, my life from the loams were surgical. Okay. Gonna be a slog then. My opponent doesn't have access to blue blue for something like Merktide Regent though. Uh, sure. That will eventually have to attack into the Endurance. Uh, that is exactly the card that I want to see. I should tap differently. Should leave green up. Last card's Bell Pierce wreck me. Nope. Alright, play land. Uh, Ancient Tomb. Don't need to play that. We'll just let that be damage. 15. Shadow Spear would be a cool draw. Uh, sure. Getting rid of Meltdown. Surgical Extraction on Urza Saga. Um, which currently has no text. Like, if you're doing that to try to turn this into a 3-3, I get it, but don't know that that is necessary. I am a green source away from making this work, because Endurance blocks one of these, and then Reclaimer blocks that. Uh, but unfortunately, this doesn't quite math out in my favor. Unfortunate. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. All right, I have a pretty respectable opening hand here. Junk an Ancient Tomb. Play an Urza Saga. Life from the Loam. A card back to hand. And we have a very powerful Urza Saga hand. Chaos. All right, the crop rotation doesn't do a lot, but hopefully I'm just like out ahead of my opponent um, with the construct tokens here. I will dredge. Thespian stage, another life from the loam. Sure. Uh, we will just drop Taiga and pass. Blood Moon is very, very good against me right now. And we are playing against a Blood Moon deck. Rabble Master is fine, though. My opponent will make a 1-1 one, one, and then attack it into my 2-2 two, two Urza Saga Construct token. If my opponent wants to trade Fury plus Red card for a 2-2 two, two Construct token, I will be okay with that. But we're just going to take the block. Good stuff. I think I'll just take a natural draw. Uh, exploration is cool. So... These are three threes. Shadow Spear. Uh, Ancient Tomb. Equip. We'll bash in for five with lifelink. Adding my life total. And next turn I can like do life from the loam exploration nonsense. Or sorry, I can't exploration. Chalice. Yeah, Fable's fine. Sure. A Fury. I can take out the smaller of the Construct tokens. My opponent does get to get in for some Goblin Rabble Master damage this turn. Um, which honestly isn't that big of a deal. Like, I'm gonna immediately get back that life loss from Shadow Spear. The basic land is just a Life from the Loam turn. Bam. Lay the Urza Saga. I think I'm just continuing to be the beatdown. Holding back is rough with this thing's ability to copy Rabble Master. So let's just ship in for the 4 with lifelink. Put my opponent to 5, and I am theoretically attacking for 5 next turn. 
think I'm most afraid of Blood Moon just destroying my Urza Saga. Uh, unlicensed hearse in game one is good to know. Ooh, I'm going to lose. That card's going to kill this construct token. Yeah, this card is just consistently insane. I called it the best card in the in the set, at least for legacy purposes, and have no regrets in saying so. Yeah, so they sack the Rival Master to destroy my construct. I'm at 11, facing down a good amount of damage. No dredge. Mox Diamond is great. So I will Mox Diamond, discard the land that hurts me, play a land, make a token, equip a token. I don't think this is enough, right? Because, like, this flips, they have a 3, they can throw that at me, hit me for 2, 4, 5, 6 damage. Not to mention, like, Den of the Bugbear is also a thing that can happen. Another Ravel Master. Uh, yeah, that's just another thing they can throw. Yeah. Uh, you have any doubts about this card, abolish them. So, uh, throw at my token. The red deck gets to remove these like five toughness creatures that they normally don't get to remove. I'm at four facing down all of this. I, I can make another construct, but the same thing just happens again. Damn, Valakut Exploration is... So close to being able to kill my opponent. I can put in a map. Produce a Merit Lodge. That doesn't work. Can't get extra land drops because of exploration. Don't have access to a fetch land. Uh, I'm going to make a construct and just like make sure I don't have some out that I'm not thinking of. I tapped that wrong. I don't think I have any out. Yep. All right. Uh, damn, damn close. But uh, broadside is strong. All right, I uh, we'll want a few things that can answer Blood Moon. I probably want access to the Maze of Ith. I think the Sphere of Resistances are going to go for these cards. I don't think I want the Fourth Valakut Exploration. Um, the Endurances are kind of questionable. All right, let's see. Taiga Exploration... Just play Echoing Deeps as a colorless land. Be working towards Dark Depths quickly with Life from the Loam. Oh, actually, what if I crop rotation the Taiga immediately to play around Blood Moon? I'm probably trying to use that to combo kill. I think that's me getting too cute. We'll just have that enter untapped as a colorless land. Like, I could have crop rotated Taiga into Forest and then have Echoing Deep enter, Echoing Deeps enter as Taiga. Magus of the Moon? Sure. So we will go a land drop. A land drop. Pass turn. Then I've got crop rotation, sacrifice Echoing Deeps, make a Merit Lodge. Blood Moon. No. Crop Rotation. Sacrifice this. Get Thespian Stage. Thespian Stage. Target Dark Depths. Keep the one with no ice counters. Nice Blood Moon. Alright, good stuff. Uh, we stole a game. Game on the draws harder because that Blood Moon and Chalice stuff can come down very quickly. I think for the game that I'm on the draw, I want another thing that I can just play out under a Blood Moon. I think these Elvish Reclaimers are pretty slow on the draw. I'm going to trim one of those for this. Like A little bit later on, they can be 3 fours, which is nice. This is a tough hand. If I get Blood Mooned, I don't have a basic forest to start this off. I'm also like not actually all that good versus my opponent just playing out a creature or a chalice on one. Like this helps out with a chalice, but it also just like ramps my opponent. It's very easy for me to just instantly be dead. Let's ship it. This I like a lot better. 
going to keep this getting rid of one copy of Exploration. This one I at least always have a green source versus a uh, Magus of the Moon or Blood Moon. Sure. All right, there is turn one, Blood Moon. Ah, uh, fuck. All right. That right there. That's a god hand. That's almost good. So very almost good. All right. So let's play this. Play a Pithing Needle. I'm gonna shut off the bomb before it happens. I have two basic forests. Okay. Opponent has no threat. I do have time. Uh, unfortunately, not in great shape. Um, I'm basically dead now. Like, I have to ambush that thing in combat. Otherwise, I never get rid of Blood Moon. There's technically still outs to that, but, like, my situation is miserable. I think I am dead enough that I am comfortable conceding here. Uh, GG's. All right, my hand's a little slow here, but I think I am down with the multiple sphere of resistances, especially against an opponent that I know um, tends to prefer blue decks. Oh? <laughs> so, Ancient Tomb or Mox Diamond allowing me to play a turn one sphere of resistance is really good. All right, Doomsday Pile has been constructed. Uh, what are we looking at here in terms of spice? There's Teferi in the One Ring. Main deck Veil of Summer. Sure. Let's go Forest Exploration Taiga Map. That got dazed. And we are just fully hands off the controller. If my opponent's pile beats me, my opponent's pile beats me. Sure. There's pedal. I get another turn. Hot damn. I don't know that it matters. So let's play a sphere of resistance without showing my opponent the ancient tomb here. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this does make this one cost three, so I can't play it this turn. Um, I don't think this ever matters, but we'll play it. I think my opponent just goes land, drop, oracle, and I die. Yeah. Yeah, I just needed to hit a land drop, or sorry, not a land drop, uh, the tomb a card earlier. All right, so if my opponent is going to build the one ring piles, collector oof looks a lot more attractive. So does haywire might. Alicut Exploration as a damage source is reasonable. I think my deck is just going to be slow. I think my deck's just going to be a little slow, and I'm not sure how to remedy that. Maybe I don't need both Haywire Might and Pithing Needle. I guess, like, this can take out a One Ring and this can stop a Teferi. I don't know that I'm supposed to mess around with both. Especially if I am going to bring in Oof. Get rid of Reclaimers? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Like, board one library to help find these. Shadow Spears expendable, probably. Uh, don't conceptually feel good about this matchup. I mean, yeah, this makes a turn one sphere. The rest of the hand is absolutely awkward from there, though. Here we go. Junk that. Play this. Attempt a sphere. Goes down my opponent a whole lot if it resolves. It does not. I get to try again on my next turn. But at that point, other stuff is live. Sure. You have the Cabal Rit? Oh, it's a Knight's Whisper. Sure. Alright. So I'll play this out so that I can play a sphere around a daze. Nice. And with another land, we can Valakut Exploration. Yeah, that's fine. And that's a Shuffle. All right, cool. We'll fetch. 
And now we have a source of damage, which can be real good against a Doomsday line, although my opponent's pretty far away from Doomsday lines right now. I think I just play another one of these immediately. Play Echoing Deeps, have it enter as Misty Rainforest, and then deal two to my opponent. Got an Urza Saga in the yard for a little bit later for if I draw another Caves. Uh, yeah, the cycling's fine. This gets my opponent their block source. Let's start here. Up a Taiga. Trigger these. Dark Depths and Verdant Catacombs. I think I just do this as it re-triggers those. Another Valakut Exploration. Didn't know it was my birthday. Batch. Taiga. Retrigger these. Ooh, a crop rotation. Don't mind if I do. Oh, let's put this in the graveyard. Crop rotation. Pick up Windswept Heath. Oh my gosh. What is this? Sylvan Library. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten incoming damage. Cool. <laughs> Alright. Bam. Uh, exploration, don't care. Sylvan Library, don't care. Mox Diamond, worse than just playing Ancient Tomb next turn. Move to end of turn. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> okay. That was satisfying. <laughs> and then I just like play Ancient Tomb and uh, Valakut Exploration kills my opponent. Yep. I don't think they can play Doomsday and win in the same turn with Sphere in play. So I'm going to get to see if there's anything interesting in how my opponent sideboarded. All right, my opponent has gone to one. I will play Ancient Tomb. Playing all of those things. I'll play an exploration. I'll play an ancient tomb. Uh, we'll, I guess, play out another card. Call that good. Kill my opponent for a bunch. Bam. A laser. I don't think I have any major play versus draw differences here. All right, did my opponent keep their seven? My opponent kept their seven. So this is an aggressive Urza's Saga hand, but I, I, I think this game is, is literally just about Sphere of Resistance, unfortunately. So I'm going to mulligan what is a great hand in a vacuum. Um, What about Oof, though? What about Oof, though? Oof, Mox Diamond is a little awkward. I'm going to keep this. I have no idea which card goes back. Literal none. I think, oddly, it's exploration with how this hand looks. Sure. All right. Did not get turn one. Eh. All right. Taiga. Mox. Diamond. Discard Boseju. Very, very awkwardly play Collector Oof. It's, I think, right now, worse for me than it is for my opponent. Sure. All right, it's still good enough to get Force of Willed. That's nice. Prismatic ending is rough. I don't think I like committing to the prismatic ending prior to the ponder. Um, so this is a May. Oh god, this is a graveyard. I'm just now realizing that in round four. Uh, we're just going to say no, though so that I can play a Sylvan Library. I, ne I need some gas here. And by gas, I mean cards named Sphere of Resistance. I expect that my opponent will do something gross this turn. Uh, I mean, that's a solid tempo play. Uh, sure, and a cycle. Life from the Loam. I think just playing Sylvan Library again is better. Again, this game is all about spheres. My opponent at this point is double queuing, FYI, so 
they are probably going to slow down their play substantially. All right, Sylvan Library did resolve. All right, we had a Teferi plus into a Serenity. Uh, sure. Uh, yes. Since my life total is largely irrelevant, I'm fine with doing this to just get through those cards, physically speaking. Can't really play Valakut Exploration here awkwardly. Thinking about whether or not I'm like Life from the Loaming or anything. I think I'm just going to play... Uh, it's fine. I'll go ahead and pick that up. Now, my opponent does only have one card in hand. They are also about to destroy their Lotus Petal, which is a thing. Teferi will keep plussing. Doomsday can happen at any point. I'm not interested in dredging. Interested in finding Sphere of Resistance. Or alternatively, putting a damage source into play. Blooded Strand does not fetch me my lands. Let's just drop Yavamaya. Another Valakut. That's not doing what I want. We'll just start doming my opponent. He'll probably bounce my Valakut exploration out of play. Uh, indeed. Another Teferi. Immediately bounce the map out of play. Just collect on the card. And again, we're looking for spheres and such. Saga? Not the worst. So let's go one, two, three. I think drop Saga as the land. Ancient Tomb. Deploy Sylvan Library. Pass. Um, not really going to be interested in dredging life from the loom. I want extra land drops. I want fetch lands. I want spheres. The spheres are getting to the point where they're going to just be physically less good. There's a sphere. Yes. Not interested in dredging. Not interested in dredging. Uh, I'm not expecting alternative uh, like wind conditions here. I'm going to say this is fine. So on my... Or I guess I can't do it on my opponent's end step because Teferi is a thing. Like, I can start thinking about a Dark Depths kill. I think I start here. Okay. Oh. Oh, just... Yep. Now that's a thing you're allowed to do. I might just respond with crop rotation or Dark Depths here. Before my opponent gets more... Or no, I can't. Can't. Teferi. Alright. So, it costs me two mana. Two mana to play crop rotation. And then I can make my 2020. So let's play this. Valakut exploration triggers. Actually, uh, no, I can't respond to the trigger. Uh, it would have been very awkward for me if that exact card was Dark Depths. Alright, one. Two. Drop rotation, junk this, dark depths, trigger, mox diamond, don't really need that. Um, so instant versus sorcery speed making the merit lodge does not matter, or no, I guess it matters if there's another Teferi, but like Teferi plus means the prismatic endings and such can do it. Uh, so I guess I wait, this is one, two, one, I'm not expecting wasteland out of my opponent. All right. Opponent's at 11 after the Valkut Exploration trigger. Here. Here we go. Another Dark Ritual. Another Dark Ritual. And a Doomsday. All right. Doomsday Pile is built. Brainstorm is happening. This will presumably find, like, a Prismatic Ending that answers this. Oh, no. If they still have the Land Drop, they can just play Thassa's Oracle and then, like, cycle Street Wraith or something. Or no, they just have the extra pip of devotion from Teferi. That'll do. Uh, yeah, we were a turn cycle away from victory there. Uh, that's a tough matchup. GG's. This is a fantastic hand. Uh, we will get to go turn one Urza Saga Mox Diamond Sphere of Resistance. 
Uh, that's absolutely the sort of thing that I would like to be doing in this deck. Basic Island and Ponder. And a Shuffle off that Ponder, even. Mox, Diamond. I'm not really ready for Stage yet. Let's get rid of that. Saga. And Sphere, making cantrips more awkward. And then we hope that we can ride uh, Urza Saga tokens to victory. We didn't get wastelanded, so that's great. Let's just play a forest and pass. Not sure what we're playing yet. Uh, a bean deck is somewhat likely. Blue green show and tell is possible. Sort of generic Uro pile is possible. All right, beans was correct. And I'm just going to lazy man make this now. So it starts out as a 3 3. Ooh. Turn him into 4 4s. I could called shot on a pithing needle here, but I think I just want to leave that in the deck. I think I'm just going to grab a map. So we will deploy a new Urza's Saga. We will deploy a Mox Diamond. Discard a fetch land here. I have 6 incoming damage, putting my opponent to 13. I am representing lethal damage next turn already. My opponent does not have white mana showing yet. Alright, now white mana is a thing. Life from the loam. Hell yeah. The dress down is a thing that I have to worry about. If I go for lethal, I can get killed by dress down. Well, not literally killed, but like basically lose the game to it. Send them. Okay. That's indicative of white removal. Alright, it is a leyline binding. That can junk a construct token. Sure. I think I'm going to go ahead and just activate now for the extra point of damage on the attack. Those individual points might end up mattering. Opponent goes to 6. Can't life from the loam this turn. I can expedition map, but I probably won't. It is another up the beanstalk. So my opponent will need non yeah, my opponent would need like non fetch land and then another swords to plowshares. Actually, that wouldn't even do it, right? Yeah. So what do I like here? We're going to grind, so I like this. My opponent probably is playing Uro. Just like literally playing things that have power and toughness and can attack my opponent probably ends up being good. I think I want to keep Pithing Needle for in case my opponent is playing uh, Wasteland Loam as a part of their mana base. I think on the draw, I don't Sphere, despite the fact how good Sphere was for me there. And I think against Counterspells, I don't do this. And we just kind of morph into a little bit more of a mid-rangey deck. And I'm going to think about these cards for a minute. I'm boarding in some number of those cards. Force of Vigor, as something that I hard cast in the mid-game, might get me back like an Endurance or a Valakut Exploration that gets exiled. Or it might take out some beans. Sylvan Library is also like totally respectable. Also, it could be that I can trim Pithing Needle because I am bringing in four Endurance that can break up a Wasteland lock. I'll buy that. Let's go Vigor, Vigor, one library. That sounds good. Uh, uh. Is this fine on the draw? Like, enough of a time do I hit a relevant card immediately that this is fine? Probably. What's my land count? 17 plus all these. My land count is 30. I'm, I'm going to try keeping this. Ponder's fine. Yeah, I, I think that just like any time I hit a land in two draw steps, this is just perfectly reasonable. Yeah, I'll, I'll count to that. So I think I go land, exploration, play... Echoing Deeps just as an untapped land, pass turn, and then next turn I'll Mox Diamond discard Dark Depths, and then 
not give my opponent to a chance to prismatic ending it before I use it. Sure, sure. Stony Silence. That's not that bad. It's a little awkward because I like want to use this Mox Diamond to put Valakut Exploration in play, but I don't think I pull the trigger immediately on that. Yeah, let's just play this as a land. Pass turn play Endurance, and then at some point, like a hard hard cast a Force of Vigor and take out Stony Silence and some other card. Sure, that's all fine. Opting to play Tundra and Ponder rather than Ponder off of Volk. I wonder if they have a red card specifically that they are leaving up. Cast a 3-4. Force of Will? Wow. Sure. Oh. <laughs> Depth stage pass. My opponent now can never drop white mana. Oh my god, they just conceded? I wouldn't even have gone for it that turn, I don't think. Uh, we'll take that. We have a 2-3 finish with this league. That was a really fun league, honestly. Like, that was enjoyable, interactive, Magic the Gathering content that showcased a new card in ways that were, at times, successful. Like, thumbs up from me. I think I'm going to echo one thing that I said in the intro here, in that I think this is a tool that you can put in the toolkit rather than something that you build around completely. Like, this card is cool. And in, like, mirror situations where you can also pull a relevant card out of your opponent's graveyard or, like, grab wastelands from their graveyard, like, that's really neat. I wasn't thinking about that in initial rounds, so it's possible in, like, rounds one through three before I realized that, that I missed some neat lines. Um, but there's there's some cool stuff here. I will say, like, this many colorless lands is maybe a bit of a liability, but again, if you are playing, you know, one of these as a utility card, you, like, you're probably looking fine. Uh, I think if you're playing a real lands list, um, I would be perfectly happy, like, doing serious playtesting with one copy of these cards. I'm very happy we included the one copy of Dark Depths. I'm very happy that we added and like alternative win condition in the form of Valakut exploration. Some things didn't come together the way that I was expecting them to. Like we never turned Thespian Stage into Urza Saga and then like did the whole basic land trick. I don't believe we ever played or activated an Elvish Reclaimer, which is a little weird, but you know, sometimes that's how the league goes. I'm relatively happy with the sideboard options here. Um, maybe we need more for something like Doomsday, but generally speaking, thumbs up, fun version of the deck to try out at your Legacy Weekly, fun version to try in a league, but I think you take the lessons from this one and throw it into a more competitive version of the deck rather than, uh, trying this as is. So Caleb, I hope that was helpful for anyone wanting to try out this deck list. Remember that's available in the video description via the Moxfield link. And if you need any of these cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your next order. Folks, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!